Hey peeps, it's your boy Voodoo Vids in the house. I hope everyone is doing well. So, Ali Dawa, the one and only, made a video recently on uh, Muslims or new Muslims versus ex-Muslims. In this video, he made quite a few accusations, quite a few statements about ex-Muslims, why he believes they leave Islam, and he gave a very, very interesting diagnosis which I made a comedy skit on with Mimsy Vids and MTRs. If you haven't watched it, please do so. It's in the link down below. Very interesting. Only two, three minutes long. Check it out. So Ali Dawa has made quite a lot of accusations in his video about ex-Muslims, why he believes they leave Islam. So what I'm going to do is deconstruct Ali Dawa's video and let's look at the main arguments together. Now, the question that we need to really ask is this. What is the difference between new Muslims and Muslims, who are born Muslims, and the ex-Muslims? Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to assume I know why every single person left Islam. I'm not going to assume why I, I know every single person converted to Islam. Everyone has their own individual stories, their own individual reasons. But I will tell you what. There is one similarity between people who leave Islam and join Islam. And that is they exercise their own personal choice in choosing their religion or choosing their own philosophy. We should respect people and give them the freedom to choose their own religion or leave a religion without any punishment or threats. Something which unfortunately uh, I cannot say uh, Muslim countries in general do. Uh, I think all the apostasy laws that are in the world are in Muslim countries. Some Muslims believe that it's okay to kill an apostate in Islam if they make their apostasy public. They are excellent Muslims. Some of them are fake. Some of them have left it for emotional reasons. Now what Ali has done here is something which he will do throughout this video. He will always call into question whether ex-Muslims are fake, whether they have emotional reasons why they leave Islam. Either way, it is inconceivable, incomprehensible for him to admit or even consider that maybe someone left Islam because it did not make sense to them. Maybe they left Islam because they were not able to reconcile very serious questions like science and religion, morality, the concept of God, the concept of prophethood, can someone be infallible, so on and so forth. These are serious questions which need to be addressed, which need to be discussed openly. So if I reach a different conclusion to you, I'm now a fake ex-Muslim or I'm now acting emotionally. This is something which he does and unfortunately a lot of Dawa people do to discredit any ex-Muslim who comes out and says, this is why I left Islam. Furthermore, I spoke to Sheikh Shabir Ali from Canada. Now, I told him I was an ex-Muslim. We had a very open conversation about very important questions like science, morality, blasphemy, apostasy. And not once did he say to me, are you a fake ex-Muslim? Did you leave Islam for emotional reasons? He took my questions and concerns seriously. So I would advise Ali Dawa and people like him who always say fake ex-Muslim, fake ex-Muslim, to take a page out of Sheikh Shabir's book and to actually listen to what ex-Muslims are saying and stop being defensive all the time. I believe these so-called ex-Muslims, yeah, some of them, some of them are genuine, some of them are not, yeah? but very little are genuine. They have, in my eyes, what they've done is this. They have an inferiority complex. So therefore, they have, they suffer from their post-colonial master's orders. Post-colonial master's orders. What a piece of art that is. It's so good, someone should make a comedy skit on that. Ali is unable to entertain the idea that Islam does not satisfy the intellectual, emotional and spiritual needs of everyone. So what does he do? Let's blame the West. And secondly, he's actually projecting his own inferiority complex onto ex-Muslims. Ali is the one suffering from post-colonial master's orders as he on some level sees the British, Americans or the West still as his colonial masters. I do not view the people in the West as my masters either now or in the past. They are my equals. They are my fellow countrymen and countrywomen. I do not hold a grudge against anyone. I don't walk around with a chip on my shoulder saying, oh, the white man, the Western man, Western civilization, you came to us 100 years ago and did this and did that. I do not view people like that. I don't believe in original sin. It's not fair to blame the people of today of what their ancestors did to my ancestors 100 years ago. It is unfortunate that people like Ali still have this slave mentality, that the white man, the Western man is 
against me, they colonize me and I need to recreate the glory of the Muslim past and I need to fight them while simultaneously living in their countries and benefiting from their system. I consider myself to be part of the fabric of this country and that does not compromise my humanity or my own identity. As an equal member of this society, I am free to formulate my own opinions and ideas about any given issue. I can agree or disagree with anyone I want. Why should being an individual and formulating your own ideas, looking at the evidence, being able to change your mind, why should that be seen as a Western value? That's kind of racist, don't you think? It's almost, I don't know, colonial. The real irony here is that while Ali is quick to point out the colonial past of Europe, he completely misses the colonial past of the Arabs and Muslims. How do you think Islam got from Arabia to India to Central Asia to Europe to Africa? Were people just handing out leaflets and had a dawah stall in every market corner? Come on read your history. I would go even further to say that Islam is still a colonizing force in the Muslim world. You see non-Arab Muslims who can't even speak Arabic say, yo, Aki, Aki. They start wearing the thobe. They have an affinity towards Arab empires of old, which ethnically they, they do not belong to. Why is that? Would you ever see an Arab person wear shawar kameez or say, baisa, baisa, kesio, kesio? Of course you would not. Why is it? If, if it's just cultural exchange, why is the culture ex exchange only one way? If Islam is a universal religion, why is it when people convert to Islam or become more religious, they tend to look Arab and speak Arab and dress Arab? We often hear the word coconut to describe a non-white person who is acting white. But what about a non-Arab person acting Arab? At least the coconut, quote unquote, lives in the country of white people, speaks the language, he's got friends, he's got family, he went to school there, all these things. But the non-Arab who's begging to be Arab, say if, you know, says a few aki aki words, wears a thobe, claims affinity to some old uh, Arab empire, this guy doesn't even live in an Arab country. He probably hasn't even got Arab family. He doesn't even speak Arabic. What are we to make of that? Complete colonization of mind and identity. Let us both condemn the transatlantic slave trade and the Muslim Arab slave trade, which directly contributed to the enslavement and transportation of Africans from Africa to the Americas. This is a real complex and problem in the minds of someone like an Ali Dawa or many other Muslims like him who have, a very, who have a very selective reading of history. European colonialism is bad, but Muslim and Arab colonialism, well, that was, you know, that was magnanimous, that was fair. They were just simply, live, you know, helping the poor people and lifting them from oppression. Come on. It's almost like saying the Americans were lifting the Iraqis from oppression by removing Saddam Hussein. Complete nonsense. Feeling inferiority, uh, have an inferiority complex. So therefore, you know, our post-colonial masters have told us that, look, this is how it needs to be. So we look at Islam and go, oh, looking with these glasses. Wait, let's put these glasses on. Okay. Okay, that, that looks bad. That, can, guys, can you see that? That looks bad. What a grand assumption to make. The only reason why you left Islam is because you have an inferiority complex and you were influenced by the West. Furthermore, if a Christian or Hindu converts to Islam in a Muslim majority country or at the time of a Muslim empire, does that mean that this uh, Christian or Hindu had an inferiority complex about Muslims and was influenced by Muslims and had an Arab post-colonial master's orders? No, of course not. You would say, well, they converted to Islam because they saw the beauty of Islam. It made sense to them. They were moved by the stories of Islam. So when someone leaves Islam, it's because they're emotional, it's because they're fake, it's because they're influenced by the West, which you've defined inherently as bad and negative. But when someone joins Islam, it's because they, they, they only see the good in Islam. No emotional reasons, just a purely, purely rational decision. This is the double standard which Ali Dawa is promoting. And by the way, there have been scholars in Islam who have discussed and debated very controversial issues like the age of Aisha, sex slaves, heaven and hell, um, the idea of a caliphate, all these things, which by the way, are not influenced by the West. These issues have been discussed and debated for centuries. Uh, for you to say, well, it's all because the West and the West is telling you how to think and that this is your own insecurity and a sign of desperation to pin down all the controversial issues on the West. This is pure victim mentality. Because they heard about the Prophet. We got to know the Prophet. It wasn't hearsay, oh, he said that and then, oh. no, it's 
they heard about it, we got to know him properly. Now, now this line is really, really amazing. They heard about the Prophet, but we got to know him. <laughs> Ali, if you've got a time machine in your shed, which allows you to go back to the time of the Prophet and shake his hand and say, how's it going, man? Let me know about your life. Peace be upon you. Uh, let me get to know you. Um, Please let me borrow this time machine. Maybe I and other ex-Muslims can simply go back in time and really get to know the Prophet and straighten out all our doubts. Most of what we know about the Prophet and the companions is through hearsay, or as they call it, um, I think it's called hadith. Listen, any human endeavor, whether it's hadith or seerah or anything like that, is a human endeavor, which means it's prone to mistakes. Some hadith will be stronger than others. Some will be completely false and fabricated. Um, but I'm not going to believe that a person in 6th century Arabia was infallible because of Chinese whispers. Sorry, not going to happen. They chose to obey their post-colonial masters to tell them what is right, right and wrong. And they said, okay, sir. Yep, sir. Mm -hmm. Ali said that I am following the orders of my colonial masters. And I think he's actually right. But it's not my British colonial masters that I'm following because it wasn't them who told me which God to believe in, which man to consider a prophet, or which religion to follow. That was my Arab colonial masters. Okay, so we understand why you see the matter like that. We understand why you want to leave Islam, because you have a yardstick and goggles that are clouded, you know, with all these philosophical ideas, you know, these with these fallacious double standards. Clouded with all these philosophical ideas, are you saying that we listen to philosophical arguments and accept them or reject them based on their merit? You're making it sound like, you know, as if exposing yourself to new ideas and new ways of thinking is a bad thing. If you are so secure in your religion, if you are so secure in your faith, then you should have no problem listening to new ideas and trying to understand them. The only person with fallacious double standards is you, Ali. When someone converts to Islam, it's because they see the beauty in Islam. Islam makes sense. The Prophet is perfect. But if someone leaves Islam, well, they are fake, they are emotional, or the West has influenced them, and they can't judge things for themselves. Terrible. If I came to you guys and said, you know what, your mum, your mum, and your dad, your mum and dad are thieves. Your mum and dad did this. Your mum and dad went and did that. Your mom and dad went and did this and that and that. You're going to automatically go in a defensive mode and be like, hold, well, hold on a second, hold on a second. Don't talk about my mom and dad like that. There is context to everything that you've said about them. I can explain to you why they did this and that. There's a context because at that time or this time, this happened and it's because of this. I know my mom and dad. I know they wouldn't do that uh, uh, with, for that reason. How lovely. How amazing. This mummy daddy argument has got to be one of the more facile arguments I've heard in this video. And, been, and there have been plenty of those. Um, but, you know, you have never met the Prophet. You do not know the Prophet. You have never spoken to the Prophet. The Prophet has never spoken to you. To compare that to your mother and father, for me, is just completely irrational and nonsensical. And secondly, if my mother or father did commit a crime, um, I should be open and honest enough to say, yes, they did. Of course, it's not something that anyone is, is happy in admitting. But if they did do it, then they did it. I don't, I mean, that is not even an argument. I don't even know why you said that. It doesn't even make any sense. I hear this a lot by Muslims. You know, you wouldn't like it if I said something about your parents. So therefore, don't say anything about the Prophet. Well, first, the, pro the Prophet is not your parent. Okay. The Prophet did not raise you, did not feed you, did not clothe you, did not help you when you fell down. He did none of those things. So please stop making it out as if the Prophet is above your parents. In reality, he is not. Furthermore, my parents have never claimed to speak to God. They have never claimed to be infallible. They have never claimed or wanted any political power, any moral power, any military power. The Prophet wanted power. He said he was perfect. When you make these big claims and when you ask for such devotion from people, you are inviting criticism. So I'm not going to criticize your parents, Ali. I'm not going to criticize the, the next man's parents because they're not claiming to be the prophet. They're not claiming to be the most, the, the best of creation. That's a very, very big and arrogant statement to make that you are the best, you are the best of creation, infallible. So when you make these kinds of statements, you are inviting criticism. Get over it. You're leaving the fold of Islam not because of its fundamental flaws in its principles or its doctrine. You're leaving Islam because emotional, because of emotional reasons. It doesn't sound right to me. It's hard. 
I don't want to practice it. So we're not leaving Islam for any flaws in its fundamental principles. I'm guessing it's emotional reasons or West or whatever it is, fake ex-Muslims. But Ali, this is a, okay. This is a genuine, sincere message to you. I know you're watching this and I've said a lot of stuff. You may like it, you may, you may not like it, but genuinely I'm trying to reach out to you now. I haven't got anything against you personally, but I find your attitude towards ex-Muslims to be just uh, completely abysmal, to be honest with you. As someone who converted to Islam, as someone who changed their lifestyle, as someone who changed their beliefs, I would have thought someone like yourself would understand what it takes for someone to change their worldview. It's not a small, it's, it's not a small thing. It's a big deal. Um, it can be very hard leaving Islam. It can be very hard converting to Islam. There are genuine problems on both sides of the spectrum. But I, I, I thought you know you would have, you would understand where, where people are coming from. We are not fake ex-Muslims. Uh, we are we are not doing it because of the West. Stop trying to undermine every single re possible reason why you think we could be, uh, why, why we would leave Islam. How about you talk to, if you don't want to talk to us, that's fine, but talk to an ex-Muslim out there and listen to what they have to say. Try and understand where they're coming from because let me tell you, ex-Muslims are going nowhere. We are increasing in the Muslim world. We are increasing in the non-Muslim world. And thanks to technology, we can speak, we, we can communicate, and we can share our stories with the world. Now, the question is, what do you want to do about it? Do you want to live in denial and say, no, 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 these are all fake, they're all fake, they're all Zionist, they're all Western, they're all emotional. Do you want to play that game? Or would you want to say, yep, you know what? People could change their minds. People, people can come to Islam, people can leave Islam. And that's fine. That's called freedom. But this attitude that you have, and other people who have this attitude, they're all fake, they're all emotional, whatever it is, this is backfiring on you guys because you look petty and you look small and you are not dealing with the real issues about morality, science, history, so on and so forth. Think about it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.